to another Lawn Clippings video from Lawn Fawn. Today we are going to be working with Schoolhouse Backdrops, Quinn's ABCs, and Harold's ABCs. You saw those sets just right in the front there. And right now I'm just stamping the cursive line out from uh, Schoolhouse Backdrops in a slate ink. It's a Adirondack slate ink, just a nice gray. And I'm just lining it up to make it one long line because I'm making a nine inch by four inch card. And right now I'm just cutting it out, leaving a little white border around the sides, um, just to kind of give it kind of a little funky. And I cut it, I didn't cut it straight. I cut it kind of a little, you know, so it would look a little schoolhouse-y. And here's Quinn's ABCs. And what I'm gonna be doing is spelling out the word amazing. And so I'm just actually gonna lay, um, lay my letters out because I'm gonna cut them out. I'm just gonna put them on the block close together to not use so much cardstock. So I'm just laying them all out. And then I'm going to stamp them in Versamark, which is a really sticky ink, which is perfect for um, heat embossing, which I'm going to do. And I haven't done for a long time because I couldn't find my heat gun. So I was really excited to, to do it again once I finally found it hidden in a drawer. Um, so anyways, I'm going to stamp these out. And then I'm going to take the A and the I and re-stamp them. Well, I need another A. And then the I was a little too close to the top to cut around it. That was just a mistake I made. So I just stamped it again. Super easy. And then right now I'm going to use some white embossing powder and I like to keep them in these little Ziploc containers where um, that way I don't have to worry about trying to funnel it back into there because I always end up making a mess and spilling it everywhere. So this is really to kind of save me with the plastic spoon in the Ziploc container. I had seen it all over the web and it was like, okay, this is a good idea. <laughs> and so right now I'm just kind of tapping off the excess, but I don't have to be perfect since I am going to be cutting these letters out. If there's a little around the outside, I don't really mind since it won't be there. And um, we're just going to heat emboss this now and so I like to keep the heat gun really moving when I do this and then another thing that I like to do when I'm all done is go to the back of the paper and heat that because the paper kind of warps up and so when you go to the back it kind of warps the other way and it makes it all straight and then right now I'm going to cut the letters out leaving a little turquoise border around them as you can see there, I'm just finishing cutting them up. And um, I also just left the insides, like say like the, the, the A, I just left that in uh, with the turquoise in there. I thought it looked kind of cool, not cut out. So um, there it is all spelled out on my schoolhouse backdrops there. I just wanted to see how it would look, kind of have a general idea. Then I trimmed out a piece of orange. I think it's the Miami girl in me. I kind of did dolphin colors here. And um, Miami Dolphins, the football team, in case you have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> But they, um, you know, I just like these colors together. They're really fun and they just scream summer to me. And so I'm just kind of testing it out. I had tried a white piece of cardstock. I kind of wanted to go all white, but uh, I thought the craft looked better, so I switched it. And then now I took out a gray cardstock to kind of bring in the gray that we stamped the schoolhouse backdrops with. And I'm just punching out one, with one of this really cool EK Success punches. It's just a fun kind of label shape. And that's going to go back there because I'm going to spell out You Are So with Harold's ABCs. And right now you're going to see me lift this up and all of the letters are sticking to that. That means that it is time for me to clean this stamp. I have used them so much. All they need is a nice bath with water and a real mild soap and then rinse them off and let them dry and they will stick good as new again. So that's always a nice tip to know that whenever your stamps start to lose a little bit of that cling, just give them a little wash off, let them dry and they will cling perfectly right again. So right now I'm stamping again with Versamark because I'm going to white heat emboss. And um, oh, and the reason they stop clinging is because our fingers, we have dirt and oils on them. And the more you handle a stamp, the more that gets on the back. So you're just washing that off so that the, the cling that was already there is just getting the dirt off of it. <laughs> so anyways, here's my white embossing powder again because I just wanted to tie in the white from the turquoise letters to this part of the sentiment too. So I thought that would be fun. Also, I thought it'd be a little bit easier than, than my white ink is kind of dry, so I really need to get a new one or re-ink it or something. So this was a nice alternative. I'm just flicking the back of the, the that little cardstock piece to make sure that none of the white embossing powder got stuck anywhere else. Another cool thing you can do is like rub a dryer sheet over it, and um, that helps the, the static from the white embossing sticking to where it shouldn't. But I got pretty lucky this time and the flicking method worked. So now we're all heat embossed and pretty and bright white, which I just love. And um, right now I'm just going to be adhering all of these pieces together. So the schoolhouse backdrops piece to the orange piece and then um, and I'm using my ATG 
um, which I just really like to use. And then I'm going to take some glue dots and use the glue dots to glue down my letters. At first I was going to use a different kind of glue, but I actually wasn't sure when I placed the letters how I was going to want them, and I knew glue dots would kind of give me some time to pick them up and move them without giving me too much dimension, which I wanted this card to be relatively flat so that I could mail it. So right now um, I put down all the letters and I'm just putting down the A now of amazing, and I just kind of put the glue dots and kind of rolled them over where I needed to so they wouldn't stick off the sides. And you can see it's all crooked and and weird on there right now and so I'm going to fix that in a little bit and that's why I use the glue dot so that I would, we would be able to kind of move the letters around to what I would like and you'll see at the end that I actually completely move them around to make them look better. And I'm just putting adhesive on the bottom part of this label so I can hide it behind um, this kind of cool schoolhouse backdrops. Thing. And the reason that I'm doing a 4x9 card is I wanted to participate in the Casual Fridays Challenge, um, which Lawn Fawn is actually sponsoring this week, and it's to create a clean and simple um, 4x9 card. And these fit inside a business size envelope, so you can mail it with a normal stamp, which I think is so cool. So I thought this was a really fun challenge. And you can see there, I'm just messing around with these letters, and I cut out a lot of the messing around because I kept doing that and doing that. So um, anyways, right there, I'm just adhering it down. I didn't want to get uh, ink on my, my projects. I think there was some ink on that blue thing, so I moved it onto the white part of my desk. Um, I tend to have ink everywhere. So just putting some adhesive down just so that I can get it on there. And like I said, I'm keeping the card relatively flat so that I can mail it with just one stamp. So just putting that down. And, uh, and you know, I'm really liking this, the orange, the teal, the white, the gray, and the craft. I think it's a really fun thing, and it does remind me of the Miami Dolphins. So, <laughs> right here I have um, these two Making Memories little felt stars. And what I like to do when I'm trying to decide on embellishments like these, I like to cut them away from the other ones, but keep the plastic on the back because it's clear. So you can kind of place things and see if you like it before actually putting down an expensive embellishment, like something like one of these little felt guys. or maybe not expensive but hoarded is a better word. I've had those in a drawer for a long time and I thought I should finally use them. So the clear plastic let me know that I would like this placement so when I put them down I didn't have to do any um, trying to rip them off the page kind of thing. <laughs> and then right there now I'm using the corner chopper. I love this thing. It'll go through just about anything um, to uh, punch uh, just a corner round. I like using the half inch side and um, I thought that kind of helped balance out all that blank space towards the top right. Right now I'm taking some of these clear rhinestones and I'm using a Copic marker. You can use a Sharpie too to customize the color of my gems. I love doing this because I can't own every single color, so I just use the Copic to match my projects. And right now I'm just kind of randomly placing them um, close to the stars because I kind of wanted to balance out that blank area under the stars there. And I didn't really leave enough space for another star, so I thought gems would kind of be a fun touch. So I'm just putting those on. And I put them on really lightly so I can move them around, and then I finally kind of push them down once I like how it looks. So there is that, and then now you're going to see a photo of the final card, and it's going to be, um, you'll see where I've moved the letters a little farther apart from each other and closer to the you are so part. And I think that makes it look a lot better and much more balanced. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you guys have an amazing day. Bye! Thank you.